Also, remember, this is not an all-share meeting. Rather, it's a question and answers for Paul H.'s take on uh, the reading or the steps that we're talking about. For details on Paul's events, story under arrest books, fabulous elusive t-shirts, and past event videos, check out the website, zenbitchslap.com. Also, YouTube has a lot on it. So get things out of the way, I've selected a passage from the big book on page 86. And uh, middle of the page, on awakening, let us think about the 24 hours ahead. We consider our plans for the day. Before we begin, we ask God to direct our thinking, especially asking it be divorced from self-pity dishonest or self-seeking motives. Under these conditions, we can employ our mental faculties with assurance. For after all, God gave us brains to use. Our thought life will be placed on a much higher plane when our thinking is cleared of wrong motives. In thinking about our day, we may face indecision. We may not be able to determine which course to take. Here we ask God for an inspiration, an intuitive thought, or a decision. We relax and take it easy. We don't struggle. We are often surprised how the right answers come after we've tried this for a while. What used to be a hunch or occasional inspiration gradually becomes a working part of the mind. Being still inexperienced and having just made conscious contact with God, it is not probable that we're going to be inspired all the time. We, may, we might pay this presumption in all sorts of absurd actions and ideas. Nevertheless, we find that our thinking will, as time passes, be more and more on the plane of inspiration. We come to rely upon it. And that's the reading for today, Paul. Oh, you're muted, bud. You gotta unmute. Just saying it's nice to see everybody and thanks, Kurt. And yeah, you're welcome. Meeting. Yes. So here, obviously, these are instructions uh for when we get introduced to this design for living. Yeah. And as they talk about here, uh We are often, what is it? We have tried it. Oh, after we have tried this for a while. What happens after you have tried this for a while? Yeah, things become habits, right? So that habit is an action without thought. So hopefully, if when you were introduced to this way of life, you followed these instructions, and these instructions are going to lead you somewhere. Yeah, which is we relax and take it easy, not as uh, as a basis, so to speak, not as a, an altered condition from the anxiety and stress Yeah, by doing something. We're now in the condition of being relaxed and taking it easy. Yeah. So the work is when there's a stubborn previous condition that needs to get affected or changed, yeah? So the heavy lifting, a lot of the time, is at the beginning of stuff. Once you get into a groove and stuff, just like it says we say in AA a lot, you work the steps and then they work you, yeah? It's a very important to start recognizing when something's working you, because that, that calls you off the job, so to speak. You stop working so much because something's working you. There's points there's, that they couldn't describe yet because they haven't had people who have been sober 70 years and 60 years. So obviously in time, effects change. They become different. Yes? And they groove into something else. And you'd have to witness it. And they couldn't witness it. They only had four years of sobriety at most. Yes? So this is about a way of life, and it's going to change life. 
the way of life is going to look different while through the living of it. Yeah. So he says here again, uh, you know, at the beginning, it used to be a hunch or an occasional inspiration. Gradually, this isn't over time, obviously. Gradually becomes a working part of the mind. Being still in experience and having just made conscious contact with God, it is not probable that we are going to be inspired at all times. Yeah, and then, of course, we're going to make absurd things about it, but we're going to learn from that. Yeah. This is the part of the process. Yeah. Nevertheless, we we find that our thinking will, at time, as time passes, be more and more in the plane of inspiration. We come to rely upon it. We come to, again, another event in time. So when you start to, uh, something and you start doing something, it's not doing something for 50 years. It's being done to by that something. It's integrated as you, that something, and so on and so forth. Yeah. And it's important. We had a great example from a person from uh, the UK that used to come here. And uh, we were talking about the, I think, the third step. Yeah. Please relieve us of this bondage of self. So he was in the habit of saying that every day. And he'd been sober for a while. And then he realized while we had we were having the talk that he was still praying for the relief from the bondage of self, and that praying was uh, he was missing the fact that it was a present tense state. Yes, by praying for it as if it was going to be a future uh, condition, he was denying the actual condition he was in, which is relief from the bondage of self. See, this is the trickiness of the head, yeah? It loves to put a condition that you may be in now as a future uh, arrival, yeah? So we can yap all along the way. But a lot of times, just like I had people I worked with, they did, I had to tell them, stop doing inventories because they were just, it turned into an obsession with self. They were going over, did I should I turn left or right on hate street or something? It was getting to the profundity of the of the character was it was like sticking out like a huge thumb, the obsession with self, going over every minutia, minutia. I don't think that's the purpose. The purpose is relief and freedom from the bondage of self. Yeah. And I think that that event over time looks like telling the truth about you, what you grew into and then the growing out of it. Yeah. So we grew into reliance on self and we're going to grow out of the reliance on self. Yeah. And we're going to grow into the reliance on the infinite. And then the things we used to have to do to keep an even keel will be based on an even keel. Yeah. The beautiful thing about skillful means is when you don't need to use them. Seriously. Yeah. That's the whole point. I don't think it's becoming a master of skillful means unless you're teaching it or you're professing that or that's your job is to share skillful means and great. But I believe skillful means are meant to, 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 their greatest success is when they're not being a when they're not needed to be used. Yes, that's to me the goal, so to speak. So, yes, we do the program. The program starts doing us, and then we're living as the program. That's a process, isn't it? You take suggestions. Do you just constantly take suggestions, or does it turn into a habit? Those suggestions, like. I don't think about going to an AA meeting. I think which one, yeah? That changed. Before I used to have to think to go to an AA meeting. Now it's which one, yeah? So things get established. It's good to notice them because if the hole is deep enough, you can stop digging, so to speak, yeah? Like something to grow, you don't put it four feet down below the surface 
it's like three inches or something. And then the seed gets in there and it grows. If you put it too deep, it doesn't fucking grow. Yeah. So obsession with self can be an obsession around the solution just as if it as it was the problem. Yeah. And this is why we need sponsorship because sometimes you got to be, uh, you know, I wouldn't have probably said this to my friend, but I was in a position of sponsorship. So I had to tell him, hey, listen, stop doing this inventory or fucking day. <laughs> it's just, the, I, I humbly believe it's an obsession of with self. Yeah, so uh, this is the point. So if you're at the beginning of this adventure, we need to have these suggestions turn into habits. How does that happen? By taking them by taking the suggestions, yeah? <laughs> this is what happens, this is sponsorship. Sponsorship isn't like a noun, I have a sponsor. It's the exchange of suggestions and then you try what was suggested to you. And if it doesn't work, then he'll, someone will suggest something else. And if that doesn't work, maybe that person will Stop being your sponsor and, and advise you to find someone else that maybe you'll work it with. Yes, but the, the sponsoring is a verb and it's sharing suggestions that we were passed that were passed on to us from the big book. Yeah. Of how to stay sober a day at a time. Yeah. And then as you increase or you stay with this and you get in the habit of being sober, the suggestions and the advice you may get are going to be different. Yes. Yeah. Because you're in a different condition. Now you could be in a condition where the problem does not exist for you. Fucking unbelievable. Yeah. Isn't that the sort of a, if you, if you want to believe in goals, I would say that's one of the goals of the program to have this incessant, unbelievably stubborn problem not exist for you is an incredible solution. Yeah, truly. So uh, I don't do this stuff that he talks about. I did, though, for years. I don't do it now because I feel I have, I'm in that attitude that I used to have to try to do something to get in. Yeah, this is the what happens. You pour enough shit on you, some of it's going to soak in. And when it soaks in, if you keep pouring it, you, your skin has got too much. Yes. Yeah. It can't absorb it anymore. So that's my take on it of being, you know, I've been engaged. I've been sober now 35 years. It's different than it was the first year, the first month or so. It was hand to hand combat with myself the first few years. Yeah. Now there's been a formalized surrender. The war is over. And yeah, there's not so much negotiating. It's just the boundaries are set. I'm not managerial quality. And if I drink or use, I don't know what could fucking happen. They, those are the facts of my life. They were the facts of my life that I was refusing to admit. I am now in compliance with that. I have a way of life to keep me away from that first drink. Yeah, so that I can have a life not filled with rehabs except visiting them or fucking, you know, detoxes or hospitals all the time. Yeah. The sadness is like when someone I know calls me and says they're in the same rehab they were in 20 years before. Yeah. Do you imagine 20 years of constantly trying to change how you feel brings you back to the same place you were 20 years ago. To me, this is the, the chaos of change without direction. See, AA changes us, but it's called growth because it's directed, yeah? The head does not change. It just changes for the sake of changing, yeah? Changing my feeling all day. But if you... If you've raced 20 years and you end up at the same fucking place, <laughs> something's off, don't you feel? <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is my feeling about it.
I remember I uh, went out with a girl and when we were first sober, I would do my 10 step every day, every night, you know, every night. And she would be with me and she would sort of scoff at it a little bit. And then she went out when she was 20 years sober and she says, oh, I used to fucking joke about you doing those inventories, but maybe I should have been doing those inventories. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> what happens when in this program the sense that this is truly your life and your life alone it's like your store and it's going to be your inventories when you see it may not be your life the demand to doing inventories drops quite a lot. Yeah. It just does. Yeah. I, it's just the way it goes. Yeah. I mean, truly, the way we, we feel when we call it our life, my life, is part and parcel of the problem. And that changes over time. Yeah you truly get awashed with the recognition that something is doing for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. Like small things, big things. It becomes the basis of your life, really. Yeah? Instead of, oh, no, I've got to get this. i got to do that. You're relieved of all that fucking bondage because you know you're in good hands. Yeah? You've seen it. You've seen how many miracles does it take to convince one? Because in the life of recovery, there's going to be tons of miracles. You're going to see it in your life and other people's lives. I would say my life and a lot of people's lives that I know completely grew from the seed of recovery. Everything. Their house was bought through a realtor who's in AA. Every fucking thing. The person they married, AA. Every, everything. Everything grew from that seed. Wow. Incredible, eh? Incredible. So, I mean, it's obviously, if you just have an unbiased view, you're going to be convinced. Yes, you are. And this idea of, like this lady was sharing the other day at a meeting, what does it look like for you to turn over? It looks like a habit. That's what it looks like. Yeah. I mean, how many times after when does turning over to become a habit after you've done it all the beginning years? Yeah. Do you feel like you are, are turning over things now? I don't. I feel like they're turned over. You know what I mean? I don't claim to be the runner of it. Therefore, I don't need to turn it over. That's been established. Yeah. Just like surrender is not a common thing I do every day. I feel where I'm in surrendered, yeah? <laughs> it's that little ritual is over because it's obvious, yeah? I'm not running the show. So I believe in time, states that seem to be a lot of transaction become a, a, an established condition, yeah? So... You're not in the act of turning over because you're not in the act of holding on. Yeah. So the act of holding on would demand a turning over. If there's no holding on, there's no turning over. Yes. It's already a done deal. This is how you get a lot of shit gets, uh, sort of peels off. And to me, this is the economy of traveling lighter. Yeah. 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 I don't think they could have explained that at the time because they didn't go through it. It's just like if you had a, a stubborn thing and it didn't come off in the first four car washes, after 800,000 car washes, it would be probably fucking removed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just, it would, you wouldn't, yeah. I mean, this idea, what was it saying? Uh, 
We seek God for inspiration or intuitive thought. Don't you think that turns into God, you know, inspiration, intuitive thought after a while? So there's no seeking for it anymore? Yeah? What Do you think this is like you win and then you lose and then you have to win again, then you lose? I don't see it that way. It's not like, oh, every day I've got to do the same fucking thing because the same problem just completely is 100% the same thing. No, you outgrow shit. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the take I have on it. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, you do a lot of shit so you don't have to do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's the point. If you do the stuff now that you need to do, you won't have to do it later. You'll be established in some condition. Yeah. yeah. And then if a resentment comes and it seems to land and has some, some grip, then you know exactly what to do. Talk to someone in the program, see if you owe any amen. Yeah. yeah. And there you go. But can you imagine if you have like, four or five resentments a year instead of four or five resentments, you know, <laughs> every fucking minute. <laughs> mm. I, mean, I mean, it's, uh, that's, that's, you know, recognition of growth just spawns a lot of gratitude and honoring. Yeah. Mm. Really. Yeah. You know how, when it was so much, the only answer was not to, acknowledge any resentment just fucking like being rain without a raincoat you're super drenched but oh it's not raining yeah fuck it now you've told the truth about stuff and you can see a resentment come like from from far you know what i mean it's not like they're you're living amongst them all day resentment it's like a foreign it's a it's a foreign uh <laughs> Uh, incursion so to speak yeah yeah that wasn't like it was 35 years ago it is like that now i just don't have the oomph to get resentful it's too much fucking work it's like a lot of huffing and puffing and to get your you know your neck hairs up and feel justified where does it take you you get to be alone and right i mean it sucks <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, it's, it's truly like us taking poison to hurt the other person. It fucking doesn't do shit. And I hate when you, I'd have a big phone bill if I had to get a lot of other people's co-signing my resentment, you know, on the phone every day. You know, that him, oh yeah, I think, you know, what the fuck? I don't care if someone got divorced. I didn't care if they were married. I don't have that <laughs> much interest in what's going on. Yeah. Just uh, so, yeah, isn't it work? Isn't it really work to get all up in a huff? It is. I mean, it's like a, that bird that has to blow up its chest all fucking day. Yeah. I don't think it's in, it, I don't think it's impressing the worms. It's just, <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> uh, hey, Nina's got her on my toes, seemingly without provocation. Uh, yeah. yeah, but if you invariably look, you made a decision based on self that put you in that position. What? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Paul, there's yeah. a new person here. She's never been here. Her name is Chantel. So would you mind talking about the exact nature of the wrong? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Nina. Listen, just if you're new, just get the externals down. See, she's not new to the program. She's new to the oh, All right. All right. So if you're, okay. If you go to page 64, the third paragraph in the big book, I think it's about the second or third sentence in there. It states a condition that the reader needs to be in, or just let's say would be happy to be in, which is being convinced. Yeah. So the people that are writing the book are already convinced. Now they're saying being convinced. What? Self. 
S E L F is what has defeated us. Okay, so this is right before we do the working, start working steps, fourth step. It's right, it's one way of describing the theme of the inventory. That way is to see the common manifestations of self in our lives, hopefully not as our manifestations. Yeah, so self is what has defeated us, manifesting in various ways. Us and self are not synonymous. Self means something other than us. Self is a singularity. Us is a collective. The collective has been defeated by a singularity, a mental process called selfing. Yeah. So self manifested in various ways is what has defeated us. Are you convinced of that? If you are, we are now going to look at its selfs. Us is not be is not under the scrutiny. Us is not being scrutinized. Self is. We will now look at its common manifestations. So common ones, meaning there's a lot more manifestations, but they're going to pick three common manifestations of self in our lives. The next paragraph starts with resentment. Resentment is the number one killer, kills more alcoholics than anything else. All that stuff. All right. Then there would be fear, which is truly mostly mental anxiety. And then harm's done to others in the pursuit of what you want. So basically, what you want uh, overrides any concern about other people. That would be called selfishness, uh, self-centeredness. Uh, yes, obviously. Okay. You haven't been mentioned at all, actually. And so we're going to do an inventory on self's manifestations in our lives. Yeah. Why are you calling them yours? If resentment is a manifestation of self and how you talk about it and how you seem to hold it is that they're yours, I would say at that moment, that which is talking for you, I don't believe is you, is in the act of being identified as self, which is the root of the disease. Yep. So the us gets, the us is what has to burden, has to carry all the burdens, but what uh, is defeating us is something foreign to us. Yeah, I, so I see alcoholism as a parasitical movement. And uh, because of its hostility, it had to come up with a great strategy to sort of subdue the host and keep the host subdued. And what better strategy than to convince the host it's the host? Yeah. So now you try all you can entertain is I want to be free as a self when the real freedom is from self. Yeah. And so there you go. That's the humble uh, offering here. The reason why we take this space and time to constantly repeat it, because I didn't hear it in my community this way. I heard I was going to look at my resentments, my fears, and my harms to others. And after I did that and did all the amends and everything, when I looked at my role in things, I saw something else's role in things, which is self. I, we call it in AA. And I saw self was hiding under the camouflage of me and was and is what defeats me. And so uh, that became super clear around seven years of sobriety and I've just been sharing it ever since. Yeah. And if everyone seemed to be super happy, joyous and free at all the meetings I'd go to, I'd probably shut up and just uh, chill out. But when I see someone share and they're 40 years sober and they're still struck, struck with guilt and shame based on something they did when they were loaded, it fucking bothers me, tell you the truth. Because there you go. That's the bondage of self. Something compelled you to do something and you're still owning it 40 years later. That just blows my mind. So I humbly, through my own observation and deep, deep experience of being taken over by something and being driven by that something and being used by that something as transportation, being under that jockey, I'm very clear the jockey is not me. <laughs> it's just super clear. And uh, I feel it's quite important 
because if you keep calling what defeated you, you, you're bound to be defeated by it. It's just that simple. That's its access into your life is that it's when, when it comes to the gate, you know, the borders and the toll booths and the gates, it just says, you know, who's coming me and you let it right in. Yeah. And then it does what it does. And, uh, I mean, there's obviously the drinking and the using is not the problem. It's the most urgent problem to deal with when you're drinking and using, but it's not the problem. The problem is the underlying causes and conditions. And to me, that's the obsession with self. Yes. So I think that's the biggest drug we're on is this obsession with me yeah and it continues in sobriety it's hampered quite a lot it's that can't be as flamboyant as it could when we were loaded but it still does its tricks yeah and uh i've had relief from this that which has bound me for a long time and i credit it to this higher power and the recognition that I was not that which has defeated me. Simple as that. Uh, it's been rolling for 35 years now. 28 years from that time, I actually, it started to galvanize. So that ain't bad. That ain't a bad run for a solution, yes? <laughs> I see it as the last answer. I'm open for a new answer to come, but I haven't had one and I'm pretty assured of the diagnosis because it's not mine. Something downloaded it and give it a shot. See if it works for you. Yeah. Nice, Carl. Yeah. If everything's working for you, keep it, let it work for you. If something still seems a little amiss, maybe this will be uh, what was sorely needed. Yeah. There you go. Thanks, Kurt. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, and thanks. We just, yeah thanks. just a second. We just come to this meeting to reinforce this idea because it's not reinforced. Yeah. Although, usually, I know maybe it is now, but I never saw it being reinforced mostly in the meetings. And so, we have an event that's not an AA meeting to constantly reinforce this idea. Yeah. And to sort of like, lay under it and get showered by it and see what happens because I, I feel repetition in the right hand can be very valuable you see what repetition does in the mental stands it's just fucking just digs deep mental grooves that are seemingly hard to get out of yeah me 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 yes my 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 <clears throat> yeah so here we are Toiling. John's got his hand up. <coughs> uh, yep, come on in. Hey, 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 Paul, it's your old friend Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Um, I I have one question for you. Just uh, as as in you know everything you say with respect to the dis disidentification with self in relation to addiction you know, has always rung true with me as long as I've known you. I think the the problem I've had is is certain aspects of selfing outside of, of addiction have proved beneficial in different aspects of my life in a in a you know objectively kind of non critical way I'd say. So is it is it a situation where you kind of just have to throw the baby out with the bathwater and in terms of the mental state completely disentangle in order to find kind of relief from the problem you're talking about or there no no aspects you, take of the mental the baby, state that you, you take the baby out of the bath water the baby can get back in in a little while you okay. just have, to have a clearer distinction of what's going on and then the baby can be put back in the bath water yeah it's 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 always been so hard to understand what part of my life has been under the rule of the parasite of addiction and then what part is the collective us because it's been so entwined for so many years maybe from the beginning and i've never got that clarity and i think that's kept me stuck for so long 
Well, yes, you're going to probably have to hear that clarity from someone else. So you need to, because you're fucked, bro. Yeah. You are. So I know you. I've known you for a long time. So you're, in a sense, uh, this that which talks to us as us can take a lot of different sounds, yeah? Some can be the more authentic Johnny talking about the less authentic Johnny or the healthy Johnny talking about the sick Johnny, yeah? But I'd say it's infected up and down the scale. And so when we hit that situation, you just got to fucking dumb down and just do the next right thing. Get into service a lot, get a commitment and uh, and just do the basics. Yeah. And so that you get some God rails, G-O-D rails on your vast highway of life. And so that you don't cream off it all the time. Yes. Because sometimes uh, the idea that the self was what produced the success is just a claiming of what really motivated any success, which is what compels us, the real compulsion in us, which is spirit. Yes. So you are not unique, bro. You had some good luck with things and things went that way. I would turn over all ownership of fucking everything. I would, because when you own something, it starts owning you, yeah? And, uh, yeah, so that's my feeling. And we, you know, you, you, are, you, you were born the day I got sober, which is cool. So, and so I've known you now for like 18 or 20 years. Uh, where have all those successes, where are they? I mean, they're, uh, they're of no importance if they even exist at all. I mean, they're, they're meaningless to the situation I, I find myself in now. Yeah. Well, there you go. So just, you know, it was funny when I, once I went out, I, I had 35,000 bucks. I bought like a pound of Coke and everything and everything I bought with that money on that run was stolen or lost every fucking thing everything when the coke ran out everything ran out everything that had happened was gone it was sort of like a complete everything Je leather jackets stereo everything fucking gone everything camera just nothing i mean Life was informing me of something. Yes. If this isn't clear, nothing else is going to stand. Yes. It may be looking like it is now, but it won't. This is like scorched earth fucking alcoholism. Yes. You're not going to have any fucking success to stand on if this thing keeps happening. It's just not. It doesn't. It's scorched earth. Yeah, it just keeps on keeping on. Yeah, it doesn't, it always overplays its hand. It does. It's uh, so, yeah, the true success is that you haven't died and you have another opportunity to get something right and you're not going to write it. Yeah, yeah. Your business acumen has nothing to do with this. This has to do with admitting the first step very clearly and then just doing stuff because you can't you've been so humbly if you don't mind it's not talking to you personally because i'm talking about alcoholism yeah you've been so inoculated with the alcoholism's response as the problem and the alcoholism's response with the solution yeah, that you can't tell the difference now. You need to just, you know, just do dumb down, just fucking put your head down and just get those days going. Yeah, and then that power will have more influence as the other power has less influence. 
Yeah, yeah. And I hope from today on, you never get loaded again. And you have a fucking life that doesn't have to get destroyed every six months or eight months for some fucking weird psychological reason. Yeah, just, yeah. So that's my take, bro. Yeah, and you know, sometimes, sometimes your successes are your greatest failures because they buoy the story that you did it all and shit. And uh, you're not going to get yourself out of alcoholism. <laughs> you're past, you crossed that line a while ago. Yeah, no human power, that includes you, is going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> So to me, that's a hallelujah, really. When you get there, it's such a relief. Just fucking, you know, no mas, surrender. Yeah. Yeah, I can I can make money. I can do this, but you can't stay sober. Fucking, and it doesn't matter the money because the, the lack of sobriety is going to eclipse every fucking thing else. If it hasn't completely, totally eclipsed it, it will totally eclipse it that's what it does it's a, the darkness doesn't stop and give you half you know sun it just takes it blocks out the whole fucking thing yeah so it's awesome that you're still alive and you've got to take that man i mean how how many ways can life knock on the door to realize it's it's message you know what i mean I mean, I was, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's been a long it's been a long journey. I know that's why it's uh, a yeah. yeah. I, but you can yeah. be done before you're done. You know, we're all going to be done. We're all going to die. It's great to be done before we're done, so that life can have leave a different taste in our mouths than it's going to leave right now. Yes, your life right now doesn't taste good, does it? No. It doesn't. Yeah. Sobriety is going to bring a sweet flavor to it. Yeah. Really. You can't buy that. You can't. Yeah. It's just a taste of like. Uh, I think one of the best postures of a person is honoring something greater than themselves in gratitude for that opportunity. Yeah. It looks good. Yeah, so we're here for you, bro. You're a lifetime member of Zen Bitch Lab. And hopefully you'll be a lifetime member of recovery. <laughs> I really hope so. A day at a time, man. Yeah. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, yeah so, thanks, Paul. Yeah. Hey, Carla, you go ahead. Hi, my name's Carla. I'm an alcoholic. Um, I'm having a little bit of a hard time with interpersonal relationships within sobriety. Um, I I feel like um, I have been a people pleaser my whole life. So it's really difficult for me to know when I'm putting my will into things and like how to, I don't know, I guess just how to have relationships with people that aren't selfish, that I'm not manipulating. So it's just been really hard to find that to thy own self be true, as well as also making sure that I'm doing that service work. So I'm just a little bit confused, um, you know, like how to manage it, because I've never really taken a look at how I how I was with people. I just was how I was. And that's how it was. So I'm just a little confused. If you could kind of help me um, with that, just uh, that'd be great. Thank you. Well, I think the best thing is to work with someone, a sponsor. So a woman that you have some respect or trust and because these things will, you know, the, in the day to day living, these this underlying pattern will show itself as people pleasing and to work with someone. It's like having uh, uninvested eyes so they'll see more clearly what you can't see about yourself. So I would work with somebody who you respect and have a little honor for. Yeah, like when I worked with some people, there was a guy, Sai P, and he's passed away, but I had a lot of respect for him and I was avidly listening to his point of view. Yeah, and it helped to navigate these things because of, of course you find yourself in all of these coping skills we had uh, and you're being led to a freedom from those coping skills. So 
uh, those things that you masked the symptoms of now are be you're obviously seeing them and you need some guidance, day-to-day -day guidance. Yeah. Yeah. I feel. So this isn't a, this isn't a, yeah, I think that's, that would, what I would suggest. Of course, these things, this is what you discover when you get sober, a lot of shit you didn't want to see. And so now, because it's time for them to change, you're brought to that situation of having to see them. Yeah. It's not a burden. It's a fucking really a hallelujah. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, you'll be able to have viable relationships with others instead of having to seemingly kiss their asses all the time and shit like that. <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah. Yeah. But this is a process, you know, the shit that was under there and had been masked by all these behaviors bubbles up. You have, you've got, you're going to learn how to face life successfully. These are the opportunities. It shows up. You work with someone you trust who will, you know, see what you can't see from the blind spots. Yeah. And uh, you'll be in a, a relationship of growing out of this shit in the, in the, in the community of AA. This is a we program, you know? <clears throat> so yeah, that's what I would suggest. If you don't, yeah, have it, it's just been so difficult because I feel like, um, you know, the people pleasing where you feel like you're doing for others, but then the underlying need for that, that need to be liked, need to be wanted. And I feel like I can't let go of that, even in, when I'm thinking like I'm doing things for the right reason. When I really yeah. reflect, it's always there, like that little bit of need to just be like, I'll turn that over then when you recognize it, ask that power to do for you what you can't do for yourself, which is let go of this people pleasing. This is the perfect recognition and the right movement after the recognition is to surrender it to the higher power. And then as you go along and you do the inventory and you'll see it more in your inventory, when you recognize more, you'll bring that to step six and seven. This is the process of transformation. Yeah. This is what happens. So you're at one of the stages where you're seeing something. You've just admitted you can't do anything about it, which is the powerlessness, which is awesome to admit. And then you ask that higher power, however you feel it is in your life, to help you with this that you can't help yourself with. Yeah, there you go. And then maybe your sponsor will have you write about it or whatever, and then you're gonna be you're gonna do the working steps or you already have and then the stuff that when this stuff comes up you'll recognize it and bring it to step six and seven you're gonna I, i'm entirely ready to have this people pleasing reconfigured and you'll ask that power to do it this is the process of transformation of AA. yeah yeah it's step by step so now you're seeing the shit you're going to tell the truth about the shit you admit your powerlessness. You ask that power that has gotten you sober and is keeping you sober to help you with this stuff. And then when you see the stuff, you bring it to six and seven. Hallelujah. Yes. There you go. And get someone to work with you because other people don't have your blind spots <laughs> to tell see oh yeah you're a people pleaser they won't be it's not going to be wow you know they go oh, yeah i can see that and then uh with love and tolerance they're going to help you through the transformation of this shit because you're going to the whole point of recovery is to be put to better use yeah yeah, for yourself and others. That's to be a maximum service. This is the point. It isn't for us to get great, but we may as a byproduct. But the point is to be of maximum service to other people we're going to run into who are having troubles. Yeah, there you go. So, get a, yeah. Just feel out, get a good sponsor and... We, it's going to be awesome. It's an awesome ride. Oh. Yeah, it's an awesome ride, really. I mean, I thought I was crippled by tons of shit. 
tons of shit. I was definitely not able to have a viable relationship with another person, never. And then slowly but surely, all that shit changed. Yeah, and I'm witnessing a person who's in that experiment with me right now, my, my, my love, Amelia. So yeah, I can receive and I can offer love, it's great. Mm -hmm. I've been reborn, yeah, through this process. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, oh man. The only problem with AA is there's people in it, you know, including us. That's the problem. AA on paper is unbelievably sound. <laughs> it's just perfect. It's just us, you know. So, welcome. Thanks, Carla. Any other hands? No. All right. Well, we can start saying goodbye. Go ahead, Paul. All right. Carla, New York. Good. Yeah. Oh, there's going to be a lot of sp good sponsors in New York. I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, they're just waiting to get you. That would be good. Uh, Dana. Nice to see you, Dana. We got Jeffrey today. Michael Stacy, as always. Kurt Z. Always a pleasure, Kurt. Kurt, we're going to be... Uh, down in Joshua Tree, January 19th to the 22nd. We're going to have a talk there. We're also going to have a talk in Temecula, I think, on the 20th. Okay. At 2, so. Yeah, maybe wanna, Joshua Tree. want to see your ass out there. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have it up on the website, but it's in January 19th to the 22nd. I think we're in that area. Gotcha. All right. Very cool. Yeah. We got Vegas, Al in Vegas. John in Florida. Oh, he's not in his room, usually. All right. He's on the move. Oh, sure. nice. Nice. Very nice. Axel. John K. Mickey, the matriarch of Madeira. Atara. Nice to see you, Atara. I saw the third eye in your palm there. That was cool. Yes. That was very cool. Nice hallucination thrown in. I like that. Wednesday. <laughs> I just see it. Yes. Wednesday. Wednesday Zoom. That's a nice title. It's my friend Gary. Oh, I forgot to change that. Thanks. Okay, Gary. Uh, Too late now. Nice to see you, bro. As always, we are coming up there sooner or later. So to, I'll to be there. Auburn. So, yeah, I'll, it'll be we'll be putting it up when we do it. Okay. Uh, Elane, Valk. Oh yeah, Elane. She was our character from Germany. Nice to see you, Kathleen G. As always, Lori. Nice to see Lori. Lori, I haven't seen you in a long time. Nice to see you again. You resurfaced, yeah? Yeah. Every five years, it's good to enter the the Constellation Zen Bitch Lab. Yeah. Chris B. Jacob and Hudson. Nice to see you, Jacob and Alex. Thank you for that artwork, bro. Let's get that done. We're going to have new shirts by January. 20 something. Nina, I know people don't want to come to Joshua Tree, but they'll come to get a shirt. So that's why we got to sort of sweeten the pot. Nina, I'll be seeing you tomorrow or something, Sun Saturday. Call us when you get here. Yeah, please. Joseph, my man in France. Alex, oh, there she is. Nice to see you, honey. Yeah, going back to your natural style, your natural color. Yeah, good, looking good. Oliver, Berlin. Mia, Mia K, Miak. She's somewhere. She's coming closer. I can feel her presence in the ethers. Yeah. Roman Mueller. 
my main man. Uh, let's see who else is here. I think uh, got some more people. Oh, uh, we got Keith, Keith M, John S, Deborah, Deborah, Deborah. Oh, I remember Deborah. Call in user number one, Brian in Minnesota, Jeffrey B, John S. Uh, I think I got everyone. Axel is in Munich. Oh, I didn't know that. Nice to see you, Axel. Hey, everyone, we'll be here uh, Saturday, 1 o'clock. The meeting is at our house on Saturday, and we'll have the Zoom, regular time, Pacific time. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, just thanks a lot for holding this space. You know, it's, a, it's yeah, it's very good. Thanks. Thanks, Kurt, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone.